It is with great pleasure that we welcome a gentleman who was born in Rio Claro, January 26, I believe it is, 1943. Moved a couple of years later, 10 years later, on to Londonville in Chiguanas. and got to Chiguanas and decided to follow his education. Went through Mausica Training College and on to the University of the West Indies. He obtained a degree in history uh, in 1967. He also holds a diploma in international relations. Six years after that, 1973, he became the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association's secretary and resigned there in 1990. That is the lead up a capsule of Mr. Jack Austin Warner. A very good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Rennie. I'm happy to be here this morning. It is good to see you all, all, all looking decked out and you're green. You, you, you're comfortable this morning. Yeah, because I went to church at half past four as always. Uh, you did what I am supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, do, I, I do miss that. I do miss that. Yeah, you probably said that just to embarrass me. <laughs> A little bit. Um, let's see. You uh, were the vice president of FIFA yes. and, and president of CONCACAF all the way until your eventual resignation um, from these roles in 2011 amidst uh, some, you know, allegations of corruption leading to the recent requested extradition of the U.S. government. But we'll get to that in a moment. In October 2007, hmm, what did you do? You were elected to the United National Congress Alliance. You were there as the chairman and co-leader. You led the party on to the 2007 general elections, and they won 15 of 41 seats. You were very instrumental in that group. Everybody said you were a, a fixture, uh, inextricably interwoven into the fabric of this party. And then something happened. Tell us about that. What happened? I'm just giving our listeners a background and a context for where we are going with this. Well, the fact is that there was some very, in the, in the early years, you could have seen there were some differences of opinion between the cabal and me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were vying for the prime minister's um, attention. They felt that I was too much engrossed in the party and the prime minister's attention. I was too popular, they felt. And therefore, they, they began to undermine me. And then when the CONCACAF had this report, uh, the prime minister was in New York. And then she said, I saw a headline in the Guardian, which she said she was stunned. So when she returned on the Saturday, um, after she met her cabinet, I went to her and told her I would resign. Mm-hmm. And I resigned from everything I had, including parliament, including MP for Shokwana's West, including chairman of the UNC. From that statement, Mr. Warner, your disillusionment then disillusionment then was with the with your colleagues and not the prime minister. Is that uh, what I'm, uh, I'm understanding? You are totally correct because if you remember the, the local government election of 2013, for example, I I made it a, a point on every platform, every speech to say and to blame the cabal, and I never blamed or touched or criticized the prime minister. Even after she attacked my family, even after she attacked my race, I still did not criticize her because I felt the cabal, they had the, their clutches around her, and therefore I, I excuse her. But that changed subsequently. That change is what I want to ask you about because folks are saying this is a vendetta. Um, he has it in for her, and they want to understand why. They are thinking that you are beyond um, the reality of what's going on, some opine, and instead just um, uh, obsessed with, with Kamala. Speak to that, please. Those who say it's a vendetta just don't understand politics or don't have the facts as a whole. Mm-hmm. And they are looking at the surface. The fact is that, I, I repeat, 2013 local government election in Shagwana's West was the most vitriolic, was the most brutal. I mean, the entire government and cabinet came down against me in ways, in ways unimaginable. Mm-hmm. And I did not say a single word against Mrs. Posad Bissessa. Then in St. Joseph, subsequently, again, it was, a, it was very brutal. I did not say a word. My point is that I kept making excuses for her from day one. I, anybody who would attack her I was the kind of bulldog, as it were, mm-hmm. to, to protect her. Mm-hmm. I kept doing this up to 2000 and, 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 uh, and let's see, up to 2000 and, uh, 2015. And therefore, I changed when I saw that it was not the cabal in truth and fact, it was the prime minister. Mm. And the whole thing came about, Rennie, because of the fact that when the U.S., and that, that's another story I'll talk about shortly. Oh, we coming to that the, too, When yes. the U.S. Mm-hmm. sent to, for, for time, extradite me, Within 15 minutes, Mrs. Posad Bissessa told her AG to sign the order. And they tried to get me arrested while I was married to Parliament. Mm. A police friend of mine told me that the warrant is here. And then I went and gave myself up. When I went to the court, really, the Prime Minister's um, lawyers were there. I mean, the same Israel Khan, the same Gerard Ramdin, the same, mm. the same, um, the whole, the whole set, usual lawyers. 
and I had my lawyers there was, was scrambling because I was not even prepared. And then, then, and then, I said it couldn't be. It couldn't be a cabal. This had to be the prime minister. That is when you said the gloves are off. All gloves are off, and mm-hmm. they are off still. And I said to you again that I had to expose Mrs. Basad Bissessa for what she is. And if after I have done that, if the country chooses to vote for her or her party, so be it. I had no problem with that. Mm-hmm. But they mustn't vote for that based on ignorance. They must vote knowing the facts as, as, they, as they are. I'm a- Why did you not say something you, you, or have an objection to it? And you're right. I was overprotective of her. Look, at, at one point in time, Mrs. Prasad Bicessa could have walked on water for me. I mean, I say so foolishly because at the end of the day, I had built her, built her at a time when everybody felt she was not fit to govern. Mm. I had invested in her time and money and so on. And therefore, I felt that she was the answer to the country's politics and problem. Unfortunately, candidate Posad Bissessa is changed completely from Prime Minister Posad Bissessa. Mm. And therefore, I saw this change come in and I refused to accept it until the very last minute. It has been disputed repeatedly the issue of what you have invested. Uh, many have said that, um, that, 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 that that statement is incorrect. You have made one or two charges that I have not heard answered, uh, including the house that allegedly was paid for. I have not heard comments on they, that. They, but They can say what they want. Mm-hmm. The facts are there, the checks are there, the, the statements are mm-hmm. there, the fees are paid, the music, the, 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 the campaigns, the, I mean, the, the dollar fed. Everything is there. I, I, I don't have to justify anything to anybody. I have the facts. And if they feel that is not true, then so be it. Mm-hmm. But there was mm-hmm. a time when, he, when this party, the UNC, could not buy a pack of China. There was a time. Mm-hmm. And there was a time when, he, when, they, uh, when they wanted water and I gave them to drink. Mm-hmm. When they wanted food, I fed them. When they wanted sustenance, I gave them. So who wants to say anything now because they have a few dollars from God knows from where? That's their business. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with that. That uh, dollar some way is a whole different uh, discussion. Jack Austin Warner, the leader of the IRP, is our guest inside brunch this morning. I want to go into the area as um, it, when you are now putting aiming all your guns at Kamla Bissessa, there is a lot um, that you have also said about other, uh, uh, other members in the, in, in the government, but they are overshadowed, of course, by the revelations coming out. There, some folks say you would be best served to suggest, rather, that you would be best served to deal with the um, excesses of these ministers as against the personal um, frailties of Ms. Passat. To, to that, how do you respond? There, there is no excess of any minister of which Mrs. Basai Bissessa is on her way. Mm. Even while I was there, I went to her and told her about Attorney General. I swear to God. And she said she'll deal with it. Then I recall a meeting I had with her and David Abdullah. And we both told her about corruption in the government. And then she said there's nothing she can do about it. Mm. So I'm saying to you that it's not to say that, I, that she's on her way. She, I mean, how could she be on her way of Ganga Singh? How could she be unaware of Gopi Singh? How could she be unaware of Munilal? The whole country knows. And these are the people who she appointed first to go up for election. Mm-hmm. It means that she has subscribed to their, their wrongdoing and will even subscribe more to it if given a second term. The issue of Section 34 uh, has been passed on as the initiative of the then AG. You were saying that is not the case. It's not the AG at all. Mm-hmm. It's not, in fact, the AG were, was a patentate. That was wholly and totally Mrs. Posad Bissessa. Mm-hmm. And I have sworn on affidavit to, to, the, to the effect, and I've shown where this matter has been of her doing. These guys came to her home and gave her money. I was there. Mm-hmm. They went to a, a home in Lunch Park and gave her money. A, a witness came forward and said so. I don't have to, to lie to, to, to people to prove this. Now you have sent this information to the Integrity Commission. I said, I said all over the world. You sent it to the Police Commission. Police Commission, mm-hmm. Integrity Commission, U.S. Embassy, uh, uh, DPP, uh, um, Police Commission Authority. You name it, I've sent it. And last week, last week the police came to me for an interview on this matter, uh, they, they began to investigate it. I said, fine. But there are times when the police, t- I got the impression they couldn't care less. And therefore, at the end of the day, I'm not bothered. I have spoken. Mm-hmm. If the country wants to listen, listen. If they want to listen, I want to re let Mr. Posad be said, go ahead. I made the point, she can win an election, but she cannot govern. You remain undaunted by the results of the defamation case involving um, AG um, Ramlogan, where the judge um, you know, found you 
in the wrong, uh, uh, as it were. Are you going to continue undaunted by that? And are there any more bombshells in to the, come? In the first case, the, 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 um, I found the judgment to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. the, and so too did my, my lawyer, Lamis Lawrence Marriage. And we have appealed it because I, I saw in this country, I see a, a young lady being a, a, a clerk, being taken forcibly from her desk, mm -hmm. being sent to St. Anne's yes. for, for, for more than a week. And then I see the, the judge give her $800,000 compensation for that. And then I see that the judge says that, that I had no case against Ram Logan and charges me almost a million dollars. Now, something has to be wrong in this country. And therefore, if we have to go up to the Privy Council, we'll go there. Mm -hmm. But I am not mm -hmm. going to lie down and play dead because it's Ram Logan. I do want to get to not just um, the the back and forth um, with the and, and the allegations that you're making, and you said you, you you have the substance to support it. I also want to go into the role of the ILP. There are many people who are looking at this situation and saying, "Well, the ILP really don't have any chance in this." I mean, look at Mr. Warner; he has moved from uh, from uh, west to east, and, and and he's unsure as to how strong his base is, and it is not something to be taken seriously. As such, they try to minimize two things. One, your role in this coming election, and what I raised with our callers earlier, the need to scrutinize uh, a manifesto to see some vision. Uh, I have not seen yours, and I have been looking. I see you have it here this morning, and, and I thank you for it. So let's go with the importance of the ILP in, in, in this election uh, in, through the eyes of Mr. Jack Austin Warner. In the first case, let me say, as my chairman, Rika Ramjit, always say, that this country seems to be sold on a kind of seesaw politics, mm. either PNM or UNC, UNC or PNM, PM or UNC. And, and we feel that the time has come that the country must take a more politically mature approach than merely, of course, seesaw politics. Mm. The other parties here, there are people who, who, are, who are highly disenchanted. In fact, the highest number of, of um, the highest percentage of voters are the undecided. And therefore, we feel that IP has a role to play. Look at Shock Owners West by election. I was written off. I went there, there a Catholic in a highly Hindu, Hindu, Hindu community. Mm -hmm. I went there an African in a constituency, 99.9% Indian. Everybody wrote me off. Every single body wrote me off. In mm -hmm. fact, one TV station had 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 um, on it the night before that. Um, what's her name again? Khadija Amin was 95%, Chakwana 5%. This is the kinds of things the media do. But at the end of the day, the people have more sense than that. Mm -hmm. The people today, Renny, are more politically sophisticated than they were five, ten years ago. I am always um, always um, um, apprehensive when I hear polls are taken, and yet I don't hear the rejection rate. Because if you don't hear the rejection rate, I right. don't know how many people you reached and how many refused to answer you just on the phone. And you're totally correct. Mm -hmm. You're totally correct. In fact, you know, polls now, that polls today are having a bad name. In England, for example, <laughs> they wrote off David Cameron. That's right, they, they wrote him off. And what happened? That's he right. came back here with a resounding majority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Israel, they wrote off Netanyahu. And what happened? He won very zongdin majority. Mm -hmm. So polls today have very little uh, um, credibility. And worse yet, the polls in this country, because many people, including Jack Warner, feel the polls as a compromise. Jack Warner is the voice that you're hearing here. Let's talk more about your party. How many seats do you believe are within your grasp? And what role, should you be successful, will this play after September 7th election? Because I don't think, I think it's pretty clear that one of the two primary part one of the other two parties um one of them will form the government there is a role for the will form, form the government one well, of them well would have won, would have won yes, majority, majority, of, majority seats. of seats and That's they right. are going to need uh, they may need the, this third variable to form the government and they, and, and they will we have put up 26 candidates and we expect to win between three five or six seats and we believe that in that case we shall determine who forms the government three five or six seats yeah, that's right and I could tell you, we, we shall win Shogunas East, we shall win, um, 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 we, we have a good fight in Shogunas West, we shall mm -hmm. win Lupino Bonya, we shall win Toko Sanyo Grandi, we shall win Kumuto Manzan, and that's, that, that's the way. So those who are saying that you're soft in, 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 in Shogunas East, they don't know what they're talking they, about. They, they, they sit down on the ground, they never walk. Mm -hmm. I, asked, I asked a young lady, Shaliza Ali in the Guardian, she called me to speak. I said, Miss, have you gone to Homeland Gardens? No. Mm -hmm. Have you gone to Longdonville? No. Have you gone to Enterprise? No. But you write a column. About, the, about Jack Warner and, and Shogunas East, and you have not walked the place. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, why haven't you walked? She said she hadn't much time, it was only one day. But she writes a whole column in The Guardian. 
Mm-hmm. Of course, the negatively as against Shogunazis and not have not walked the place. And I asked her to walk Shogunaz East and see for herself. She believes that the that that the Muslims will vote for Karim and so on. I said, go ahead. I mean, Karim, everybody knows that Karim is not a true, true Muslim, but in any event, that doesn't bother me. At the end of the day, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Mm-hmm. I am there every day. I just left here there this morning. I'm going back to Lunch Park this afternoon. And therefore, I know what I see on the ground. We will get to extradition in a little while, but I want to continue with ILP, the, the party, because the gentleman who is my guest this morning is the leader of, of, of that ILP. Let's look at 1919, for instance, and say that we come up 1990 or 2020. So either three seats um, uh, where, where you need a third party to contribute. Where are you going? Would you go with the UNC? We will not go with the UNC. Mm. We have said it quite clear that under no condition... We'll go to the UNC. We cannot impose on this country anymore mm-hmm. one of the most corrupt government this country has ever seen. Let me cl- make it clear to you. In the past, Rennie, really, you, you have governments and there were persons in the government who were corrupt. Mm-hmm. So you had PNM and you had, of course, O'Halloran, you had Pervat and so on. But never in this country's history have you had a whole government that is totally corrupt. Mm-hmm. There is not a single minister you can point your finger there and say who is clean. Do you feel that if, if, if what you allege is correct, do you feel there is need for a serious investigation post the election at which people should be held accountable? And that, is, and that can only be done with a new government. Mm-hmm. And that is why I'm saying again, it will not be the UNC because the same thing will continue. We have some of the most absurd... I mean, if you look at Wasa, for example, I have some documents in Wasa. It will blow your mind. Mm-hmm. If you look at the mm-hmm. kind of payments they make for, for jobs that are not done... Monthly, and yes. So on, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Pesad Pisesa is aware of all of this. All of this. I mean, housing is the same thing. Trade industry is the same thing. Wherever you turn... Wherever, and what is worse for me, Rennie, is over the last five years, in this country, mm-hmm. corruption has become the norm, become the way of life. So everybody believes to get something done, you have to pay for pay for it. You have to be corrupt. And that is sad. It was not so in five years ago. I repeat, you had pockets of corruption, mm. but now it is all pervasive. And that is the UNC's legacy to this country, and that must change. You're going to need to look at the Integrity Commission, and you're going to need to look at the police. Well, well I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure if one could look at the Integrity Commission, because when I see the experts this morning asking Kit Rowley to explain, uh, I mean, something in 2004, mm-hmm. 11 years ago, I'm at the chairman of the commission, and where he came from, from Israel Khan's office, I shook my hand and said, Jesus Christ, help this country. Because, I mean, it has to be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, mm-hmm. it has to be harassment of the worst kind. And the only good point is, is that the whole country has seen through it. Jack Warner is our guest. I need to get into the area now of the extradition. You said that um, there was a instruction earlier when we were talking. Uh, you said that um, the prime minister immediately asked the AG, or in short order, mm-hmm. to sign the paper. Mm-hmm. Yet you're saying that the paper has not been signed. No, it has not been signed. Why has it not been signed? Why do you think it has not been signed? Well, I have my, I have my, my doubts, but I believe that it has not been signed because the AG knows that when it's signed, I will put him in the box. I mean, at put him in the box, he owes me money, which he hasn't paid. He has compromised his position. There has been a lot of pre-trial um, pre-trial um, um, public, mm-hmm. publicity mm-hmm. on this matter and therefore I'm putting him in the box and as of today Renny as of today I have not seen a single charge no has no has um, my my um no, my journey. lawyers mm-hmm. and so on mm-hmm. haven't seen it. Are they obligated to show you that? They have to. You can't charge yeah, me until you show what charge me for. Mm-hmm. I'm going to quote sometime again this week not seen after three months the charges. What so you're saying that he's this extradition order because he does not want to be put in the box that, on account of something that he owe you personally? That is that is in the main and an account also to of the pre-trial publicity. And I'm saying mm. to him, I'm begging him sign the sign the document. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't the country? Ask the question, why has the agent not signed the document? Mm -hmm. Jack Warner, are you worried? I know we know that you have the appeal. We know that you can appeal all the way to the Privy Council. We know this can stay for 10 years. But speak to, if you will, please, the issue of this extradition uh, request. How just is it? And if it is not just in your view, explain, please. It is foolish. I mean, it it is absurd. 
the fact is you had a World Cup, a World Cup vote, mm-hmm. and the U.S. lost the vote to Qatar. The U.S. F- feels that a small country like Qatar, with less than 100,000 people, mm-hmm. a Muslim country, should not have been given the World Cup. They blame me and others for influencing Voting. that. Mm-hmm. And therefore, they, they try not to be to have a witch hunt on FIFA and its members. The fact is, I was CONCACAF con- president at the time. The U.S. was my member. And the U.S. felt that I didn't go far enough to help mm. them. I couldn't be bothered. The fact remains that at the end of the day, the U.S. has no divine right to host a World Cup. None. And therefore, I am not even worried that Qatar got it. A Muslim country, a Middle East country, it had never been there. I have no problem with that. You were saying that American exceptionalism, as they see it, yeah. is the reason they have gone after FIFA. They are saying that we have records of the money being transferred through the United States, and that is how we got involved in this. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the money transferred through the United States does not, does not, of course, warrant them, in my humble view, for demonizing the FIFA as it has. And this has been going on for the past three, four months. I don't see that being the reason. The, the, in FIFA, FIFA deals in euros, in Swiss francs, and US dollars, but depending on where, you, on where the event is. So what? At the end of the day, so what? Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when Obama called me to his home and took me on a tour of his bedroom and all his offices mm-hmm. and so on, wasn't that bribery? Mm. Wasn't that bribery, as, as it were? Some will argue it was a courtesy. When, okay, when the English team came here to play against the West Indies mm. and they chartered a plane and Beckham came to play and so on, so on, so on, you think England would pay Trinidad to be a match just so? Mm. Wasn't that, of course, hoping to get my vote? When they came, came to meet the Queen and they put me in the Queen's, in, in the Queen's aeroplane, with the Queen's pilot, and tell me, look, this is where the Queen sits. You sit down here and so on. Mm. What, what are you trying to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah? What are you trying to do? When Mandela came here in this country, for the first time, to meet the, the, the country and the people here and so on. What are we trying to do? But let me ask this of you then, and I, I see your point because I've uh, I argued, and I think most folks will have to agree that there are many forms of bribery to take place in just about everything. Um, but but, but the, 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 the indictment of the hierarchy of FIFA, uh, the, the, the Americans are saying, is, is, is tied in. You were, you were swept up in that dragnet as it were. Are you uh, suggesting that it is because of the exclusion from representing, from getting the World Cup, that they decided to move after the entire body of FIFA? I'm not suggesting. I'm seeing that as a fact. You, you, can you imagine, had they gotten the World Cup, mm-hmm. had they gotten the World Cup to host, you think this would have ever happened? Oh, I, I mean, when you happen to, you happen to be a footballer to know it. Would this have, have ever happened? No. And let me ask you, this, this, they, are, they, are, they are attacking me, they say, for being corrupt with FIFA money in, Z- in Zurich in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Okay, assuming, but not agreeing that they're right. Why is it that we have called the heart? who interfered all money here in Trinidad. He's in the U.S., and this government hasn't asked the U.S. to yes. extradite him. Mm-hmm. No, it can't mm-hmm. be fair. Let mm-hmm. the U.S. send back Calder Hart, ask for him to come, and then, of course, ask for me. Though, of course, I'm saying to you, my offense, alleged offense, is in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. His offense is here in Trinidad. Understood, but their argument, because I paid particular attention yeah. to that, Jack Warner is the voice you're hearing with us on brunch this morning. I paid particular attention to that to understand how they got uh, a dog in the fight, as it were, and they are saying because American banks were used to transfer this money and that it is commerce across the United States, hence the reason they came after that's you. A, that's, that is flawed. It's flood, it's flood all over. Could you speak to, to, to your son's involvement in this or this dragnet? I, I, I speak to them every day. What my son did, what everybody do, they went to, to, to Miami several times and they deposited money from their businesses mm-hmm. under $10,000. And all they have charged them with is structuring of monetary deposits. Nothing else. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Mm-hmm. And you could see, in fact, that is so, so, so foolish. What, it, what, it, what, it, what it, the lawyer said is that this has to be a deliberate attack on, on, on the guys. You go to the states, you can't deposit ten thousand dollars. We can deposit nine five, nine thousand five, nine thousand eight hundred, and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because they did that three times, they charge for that. That that's what it, that's what charges about. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, in this country, people make all kind of um, 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 absurd statements. I don't have to I don't have to answer them. We are in the political uh, period. Uh, some call it the silly season. The ILP is a bona fide party. The gentleman who leads that party is our guest this morning. So I'm getting back to that. We're not staying away from that. But there's an elephant in the room, and that elephant is what we're talking about, which is the extradition request from the United States uh, for Mr. Warner. Uh, d- m- many people have also opined, and I have my suspicion personally as to whether the disassociation from your contribution 
to the UNC slash PP or whatever, um, has to do with the fear that if you are on the one hand tagged for getting money uh, illegally, um, but you spent it on them, uh, which is to say supporting the campaign, that they will be drawn into this, the use of that money. Is, is that something that... Uh, no, there's no merit in that. no merit in that. In, in, in the first okay. case, I, I got no money illegally at any time. Mm. What is happening to them that they, they are now awash with money. Mm. At a time when they had none, they were able to use me. I don't need you anymore. I know they don't need me anymore. Haiti I, I, is something that folks talk I, I mean, about, Mr. Warren. I have published documents on Haiti, mm-hmm. I mean, for the longest while. Mm-hmm. Haiti was given $500,000. I spent $950,000. I published documents. I have the receipts. I sent it to FIFA. I have a letter from FIFA telling me it's okay. So at the end of the day, I have to Just to make sure I run the gambit on no, the no, FIFA. You have to, I have no problem with that. Okay, good. I have no mm-hmm. problem with that. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, at the end, and also to the end of the day, if even that was so, how to come the U.S. business? Right? <laughs> I, I mean, the U.S., the money came from FIFA to Haiti. I chartered a plane. I carried food for Haiti. I carried water and drink. I brought them here. I took care of all of them. All the bills are there from the Crown Plaza and so on. And therefore, I don't see the, the point. But how is that the U.S. business? To put the bow on the tail of this area of FIFA, local footballers are saying that um, they were uh, shortchanged by you. I am sure you have they, heard the charge. They were saying, they were saying so. And I said, fine. At the end of the day, I am saying to you that the the, 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 the local footballers have been the highest paid footballers in the world. Mm-hmm. Ever, ever went to a World Cup and never score a goal. Right? I am saying so even for Ben Sancho. The only goal he scored was on himself, and so on. <laughs> and, and therefore, I'm making the point. As far as I'm concerned, they were overpaid and overpriced as, as such. They are saying they want part of the profits from the World Cup. And I'm saying to them, you can't get the profits. You have to get the net net returns. Mm-hmm. And they are saying, no, they want the profits. And I say, the fact is, that at the end of the day, you can't get profits until you pay all your bills and see what the profits are. And therefore, you have to get from the net return, and that's where the argument is. Mm-hmm. What they're saying uh, 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 in terms of of, um, of 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 profits, and what I'm saying, say, and what I'm saying, are totally two different things. But what is important, really, very important. I have left football four years now. Yes, four years now, and you know, f- after four years, football still can't catch itself. I have I, I've read in one of the papers over the weekend where Concacaf had to lend the money to pay the bills and so on. Mm-hmm. After four years. And after four years with a government that is supportive of the sport, when I was there, the government was against me and the sport. Four years have gone. Why hasn't football risen? I have spoken here on this, uh, not on this Sunday morning program, but on my morning programs from 6 until 9 o'clock. That's my plug. Uh, To people in Barbados and uh, people in Grenada, and you were held up there as a hero. At least that's what some of the reporters out there say. I'm I'm held up up every other country but this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not even worried. Because I know a king has no honor in this country. I'm not a king, but I know I have no honor. The leader of the ILP is in conversation with us this morning. He brought for me, Mr. Jack Warner, I'm speaking of, he brought for me a copy of their manifesto, which I am happy to have. Of course, there's no way I can read this while we are speaking, but I will ask you then. Identify for me, please, sir, the five top priorities in this manifesto. The first thing thing is crime. And we are saying that with crime, that you have to, 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 to do it differently. You have to have coastal police stations. You have to have army camps in Maruga, in Cedras, in Erin, and Martlot, and so on, mm-hmm. where no guns are coming in. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, if the police take 10 guns off the street, they have 100 coming in. Mm-hmm. And until you could plug the holes they're coming in, then, of course, you're wasting time. We, we said also, too, to put a consulate in Pedernales. Pedernales is 15 minutes from Cedras. Mm-hmm. That's where the bulk of human trafficking takes place and, of course, um, ammunition. And we are saying to start that consulate with special branch officers who will be able to see what's happening. But again, nothing here has, has been done. We said also, too, that the police should be able to declare their assets annually. There are policemen who are very wealthy mm-hmm. and who don't know, you don't know where the wealth comes from. And they thought about doing this annually. And when you know what's happened, Renny? You know the police association agreed with this. The police commissioner agreed with this. You know, Kamla and Munilal, when I was there as Minister of National Security, disagreed. The police, uh, uh, the police Association and the Commissioner of Police, the police hierarchy, yeah. are in agreement with you yeah, that, right. that there should be a monitoring That's accountability. Right. That's right. And you were saying that the existing government is in disagreement with the, us? I went to show. I mean, when I, when I was Minister, I raised this in the Cabinet. I mean, Munilal struck it down because he believes that he has all the answers for everything. So he struck it down. And of course, his prime minister agreed. So I said, why? He says, because we don't have the, the, the machinery 
to, to audit um, 7,000 police officers every year and so on. You had an interesting, you have an interesting um, history with Mr. Monilal. I want to get to that a little bit, in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. We will stay with yeah. where we are here.